going on a no AC call. They said they set it to 70, but sets, but it stays at 75. The first thing I check on every single AC call I do, no matter what, is the air filter. No matter what they say. So let's go check it out. Here's the unit, and I'm just going to pull the plug on this up here. The filter actually looked pretty good. And then we'll come back in a few hours. We are back. Unit is thawed out, and air filter is not bad at all. Let's head up to the roof and check out our temps and pressures. I've got my gauges hooked up and my temperature clamp hooked up to the liquid line. Now I'm going to reapply power. And let this run for a couple minutes. There's not a lot of heat load out here today, so. This kind of makes checking the charge a little difficult. So we've got a saturation of 86 on the liquid line. And 24 on the suction. Which is low air, which is low enough to where it will freeze up. And 79. this on my vapor line we're gonna take our saturation temperature and subtract our line temperature whereas on subcooling you take your line temperature minus your saturation our line temp is 70 on our vapor line and our saturation is 24, so that's like a 44 degree superheat. You take your subcooling, you flip it around. So let's add some refrigerant. Grab the old leak detector because I'm gonna do a leak search first on the indoor coil because I did not see any signs of major oil on the outdoor condenser. So I'm gonna start there before I add gas. Now, I'm still going to do a quick sweep on the condenser, even though I am very sure that that evaporator coil is leaking. I've been burned before where I've condemned one coil and the other coil has 
leak too and it's not that uncommon on a unit that's over 10 years old. But then again, I don't really see any signs of oil out here. That's not always a, you don't always see signs, but in my experience on these units, a lot of times you do. Did not pick anything up out here. So I'm gonna reapply power. Grab my middle hose, my yellow hose, which is the charging hose. Make sure my valves are closed all the way. And crack her open. And flip it upside down. We do in blended refrigerants, we charge in liquid form. Not only that, now that it's upside down, we have a seat. Crack this open until you see liquid come out. Now we know all the air's out of the line and we can charge. We're gonna charge by subcooling because this is a TXV system. I do not have a charging adapter, so I'm just gonna do quick spurts. This will prevent liquid from entering the compressor and it will also prevent me from overcharging it which is easy to do well it won't prevent me from overcharging it but those that i've seen people just let it rip when they charge without the uh, charging adapter and I, i've seen a lot of people overcharge it and i've done it myself but i don't really make those mistakes anymore 86 minus 81.5 we're at a four and a half degree sub cool. Eighty four and a half. Ninety. Now we're at five and a half degrees. And every time I do a quick spurt, it's going up a couple degrees on sub cooling. I've also got my meter over the clamp because the sun is hitting it and it doesn't hurt to uh, hit the line up with a little sandpaper to get a very accurate measure. Now we've got 83 and 90, 7, seven degrees subcooling. Okay, we are at about a nine degree subcool. I'm happy with that given the outdoor temp. I'm just gonna check the superheat real quick. Make sure that that's all legit. We're looking for, I don't know, 15 to 20. We actually have about a 24 degree superheat. I'm all right with that. It's a little high for your superheat, but then again, there's no heat load in there. It's probably about 68 degrees by now. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. When removing a liquid line hose, especially while the unit is running, it's always good practice to wear gloves. If you're not gonna wear gloves and be an idiot like me, keep your fingers out of this area, okay? And if you're low loss fittings, if you don't change your seals every year, you're gonna get burned. And refrigerant burns suck. Keep your hand and fingers out of that area. And you should be fine. My low loss fitting, this is brand new. And I changed mine every year, every season. Nothing sucks more than getting burnt with refrigerant. I don't have one on the vapor side. Not really needed for this equipment, but it doesn't hurt to have one. Put my caps back on. So the system is now cooling Cooling for how long? I don't know. Maybe a year, maybe a month, maybe two, maybe a week. It didn't look like a huge leak, but I'm going to give the service manager and property manager for this property the options on what I recommend, whether that be order a new coil, replace it, order a new system, replace it, put in some leak sealant, 
that dye stuff that seals leaks. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Burn the coil back and try and repair it, which I've done before. Works about as good as the leak sealant stuff, hit or miss. And when taking your line temps, I do have probes, I do have clamps, and sometimes I do, you know, electrical tape the wire to the line to take the temp. It's not efficient, no, but that is how I learned. And that's what I'm gonna do while I'm trying to teach this. And I will also show you the probes. I showed you the probes in the last video, I believe, HVAC Training 4. Um, they work great. Just use whatever you have at your disposal. One last note, when you're going through your troubleshooting process and if you need any answers or questions instead of hitting up Google all the time and getting wrong answers, check out these cards right here by AC Service Tech. I am not sponsored by this. This is from Craig Maggiano, I believe. And he is a great YouTuber, great trainer, and he has these cards. They're, they're just great products. I refer to them all the time. They're, I'll leave a link in the description. Highly recommend them. I don't usually plug products like this for no reason, but this is great. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. My name's Dave. This fix is done.